Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habita fillah The question was asked In my community there are no salafiyya or there's no salafis Most of them are innovators and insult and insult publicly Ibn Uthaymeen, Al-Albani as Wahhabis and idiots Wa'iyyadu billah But I have no other masajid in my area but it's hard for me to hear, as uh, to hear this uh, on the khutbah where the khatib is attacking again and again Salafia and the Sunnah and calls to the Ashari creed. How should my behavior to them uh, be? Should I talk to them nicely, giving them the salams? How? And even though they're attacking the scholars. Uh, in extremely harsh ways and accusing them of being Wahhabis and so on and so forth. How should my behavior, particularly to the Imam of the Masjid, be and to the common people who are visiting the Masjid and are laymen but are affected by the deviant words of the Imam as an example? Uh, so this is a long um, question uh, and We've mentioned uh, and, and, and discussed scenarios such as this prior to this, but anyhow, uh, first and foremost, follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam first and foremost, and that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, مَا مِنْ شَيْنَ أَثْقَلُ فِي مِيزَانَ مُؤْمِنْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامِ مِنْ حُسْنُ الْخُلْقِ when Allah yubhidhu al-fahish al The Prophet wasallam said, There isn't a thing which he weighs heavier on the scale of the believer than good manners, and verily Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. The Prophet wasallam also mentioned that there isn't a thing that, basically, in, in meaning, I'm paraphrasing this, paraphrasing this hadith, that brings about better benefit than... Uh, lean, being uh, gentle. And there are many nusuls that talk about husn al good manners, and being gentle. And likewise, that the importance of guiding others. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لِيَنْ يَهْدِيَ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجْلًا وَاحِدٍ خَيْرٌ مَنْ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنْ حُمْرَ النَّعْمِ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there is, uh, there, uh, that a person is guided to uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala th that uh, is better for you, uh, through you, is better for you than the red camels. And with that being the case, we see all of these, this, uh, all of this, or all of these nusuls, so many texts, which show the importance that the asal and da'wah is with gentleness and looking at your particular situation as we've had this issue discussed with many of our ulama and many times these same questions over the years countless times and prior to us I'm sure that generally they say in a situation like this meaning that you are in a place where there's no one from Ahl Sunnah in general meaning especially from the imams, as you mentioned, according to your scenario, if this is a truthful scenario, that there's no other masajid around you from Ahl Sunnah, and that the masjid, the imam is Ashari, or it could be Diobandi, or whatever, Naqshbandi, uh, or some other sect or group. Uh, in that situation, you are alone. And if you look at the masalih and the mufasid of the issue, in general, that say, for example, you take a position which is also valid under certain certain circumstances as well to make hajr. Hajr is mishru. You know, making hajr and cutting people off is legislated in Islam under certain circumstances. And as the ulama mentioned, to make it uh, uh, malachis of this issue is that it is built upon the har weighing the harms and the benefits. So, for example, in that situation, and I have a situation actually where I'm staying now, temporarily at my mother's home, uh, this, the, the masajid around here, 
because this is a more, in general, uh, more affluent area, they are Microsoft employees. So the misogyny on this area in general, in, in this city and the city, some of the surrounding cities that are closer, that they tend to be uh, affluent, uh, heavy Jamata Tablik, and going with that, you see that there's probably some Asharia in their Akida and their Imams, and they have a lot of wealth and influence. If I were to go to these Masajid, which are the closest ones to me, uh, and make Hajar of people. For one, that is not, that hukum is not inclusive of everyone in the masjid. And I, to my surprise, I found through over the years that there were some Salafis even in uh, the masjids, or at least people who were oriented towards Salafiyah. And that was to my surprise. Uh, because, I, and I found that out just through, you know, brothers in the masjid and giving me salams and then after some time ha having discussions and so forth. So it would be of no benefit. There will be no masada if I didn't pray in there. In fact, I would have no place to pray uh, because uh, the masajid that are oriented towards the sunnah are so far, they're at least uh, 30 minutes to 45 minutes uh, would be the nearest one. And... So I would have no place to pray. There would be no benefit. And the people would just think, see me as a troublemaker and as a source of fitna. The people know I'm Salafi. And they know that I live in Saudi Arabia. They would not allow me to do the khutbah or anything like this. But they have at least a general respect. Even the imam. We have a general understanding and a respect. I give them salams when I come back. And I'm in the masjid. Salam alaikum. How you doing, sheikh? Whatever. And he's Ashari. He's uh, Ashari. Dio Bundy, I'm sure, from South Africa. But we have a respectful way of dealing with each other. He never speaks ill of Salafis, and I never speak to him about those issues. We deal with issues that have to have that have maslaha for the general community. And generally it's just about I give them salams and that's it. And I go to the masjid, I pray. When they get up to give the bayan, because Jamaat al Tablik is very active there, I leave. And they and it's noticeable. So they know that I'm on something different than what they're upon. And they may say things behind my back, but that's okay. We have an amicable Islamic relationship. And this is what I advise in your situation, that it's amicable. If you don't have the knowledge to be able to have discussions uh, with the imam and sit with him about certain issues, then don't do so. And if there's no uh, Islamic benefit, and I don't see any, from what you're saying, I don't see any benefit from you cutting the people off and being becoming to them a source of fitna because you are cutting off the Muslims. And perhaps a new Muslim will say, well, what is, what's going on there? And will be deterred from staying Muslim or whatever the case may be. So generally, those types of scenario, when you're by yourself, and there's a precedence in the, the Athar, in the... Um, some of the narrations of the Salaf and some of the Masail, those major Masail like praying behind Ahl Bida and the issue of Imam Ahmed praying behind the the leader who was uh, believed in uh, the, that the Quran was created, which is a much more grievous sin and deviation. So it shows us the that these issues are not black and white. And my advice in general is not to be a source of fitna for yourself and for others, but be a source of guidance. Allow for them to look at you and see you in a positive light. That doesn't mean you go and you're going to have tea and drink and, uh, you know, coffee and hang out and things like this. No, you go to the masjid, you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you feel like reading Quran in the masjid, you sit and read the Quran. You do those things, you give salams, and you keep it pushing, so to speak. You leave that gathering and strive to be on the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the more that you, indo you uh, involve yourself in beneficial knowledge, ilm and nafia, this is going to help defend you and help protect you uh, until your situation is better and you can be in a masjid of the sunnah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct from Allah Azza wa Jalla, anything I said that was incorrect was surely for myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.